Welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's me, Stu, and Tom. Tonight we are going to That's be nice. reviewing a movie, a beer movie, and this is what it's called. Now, you're probably wondering, why the hell are they reviewing a movie? This mm. is a beer channel. I was but thinking about that, to be honest. We kind of started, like, our way with uh, movie reviews. We had our way with, with the movie <laughs> reviews. <laughs> yes. Many a time. Um, and it's only in the last few years that we've become one with the beer. So, when there's an opportunity to exploit both... <laughs> I'm happy to do it. And previously, we have, I mean, if you look at our YouTube channel alone, we have our audio commentary to Edgar Wright's The World's End. Mm. And uh, if you look at the Lager Logs uh, podcasts, you'll find our review of the Oscar award winning uh, Another Round. Check those two out. Yep. I'd, I'd recommend them. I was on them. I was there for those previous shows, but I think. They're fantastic. So even, though, tonight, even though I was on them. Doesn't matter about me though. Stu was fantastic on them. Check it out. Going to be talking about the latest. Oh, sorry. My Sierra Nevada has made me quite gassy. Uh, we're going to be talking about the latest beer movie. Mm. And it is the greatest beer run ever. The rest is it? By don't, don't Peter it Farley. The Pretty good though. And it is a Apple Plus movie. So if you have an Apple device, you've probably got a subscription that you didn't know that you're probably paying for. You and now you can actually use it and watch something with it. Mm. So I actually watched it on my iWatch while I was jogging. I did I did both of those. They say men can't multitask, but I managed to pull that off. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, uh, for the uninitiated, what is the greatest beer run ever all about? It is a run involving beer. May or may not be great. Um, <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this off on DB, save even thinking about it, Stuart. Uh, a man's story of leaving New York in 1967 to bring beer to his childhood buddies in the army while they are fighting in Vietnam. Yes. Do you agree with that synopsis? <laughs> that is you look, accurate. You, you look a bit confused. <laughs> Did I watch it's, that film? Or? It's, it's one of these films. Like, in a nutshell, it's a good film, but it's a very strange film. Mm. Or let's just say it's a very strange story based on a true story. So there's that. But... I've never seen such a strange concept of, right, uh, like people in a bar talking shit, and one of them's like, oh man, if I had a chance, I, I would take my boys a beer. I would, like, for all my my pals that are over there fighting the war, I would, I could just, if I could only give them a beer, and then one of them decides, yeah, I'll do it. And then they do it. I've agreed to worse things after a few points, uh, I've got to say. So, and, yeah, and the, as I feel like the movie itself is aware of how fucking stupid a concept that is. It's a bit, yeah, it, it's a bit more kind of self-aware. Yeah, it's like, wait, why are then, you here? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> That's fucking, like, buy me a beer when I get back, you bellend. Yeah, I mean, everyone else in the film, apart from that initial group of friends, thinks it's a pretty stupid idea. Yes. Um, every single person he seems to interact with um, seems to think, yeah, he's probably not the best thing to be doing while there's a war going on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so what's what's your kind of nutshell opinion of it? Nutshell opinion, uh, it was okay. It was com completely just vanilla, straight mm -hmm. down the middle, average, median. I'm trying to remember back in school now, average, medium, mode. It's mode, I think. <laughs> um, it, it's any of those kind of middle ground descriptives uh, you can pick from, for me personally. Yeah, and it's got a handful of familiar faces in it. I mean, your lead actor is Zach Efron. Yep. Who is, is sporting a tash. 
it's a it's a good tash. Shame about yeah. his acting. Uh, then you've got Russell Crowe, who uh, shows up for a couple of scenes as a like a a member of the press who's yeah. there. And yeah. um, Bill Murray shows up as as like a bartender who who started all this shit in the first place. Yeah, he is about five minutes of, of screen time. I didn't recognise anybody else. No, not in the film apart from those he, guys. Let's see, like Zac Efron's character, uh, uh, Chicky Donahue, has his friends over in the war, and then he has his friends back home, who I I assume couldn't enlist or didn't enlist. Because hmm. my first thought was, why isn't Chicky enlisted? Hmm. Because, right, yeah, one of his friends was in crutches, so he's, like, physically disabled. So, right, that makes sense why he's not there. Zac Efron still looks like he's just walked off of the set of, like, Baywatch. He's, like, just veins and just, and like... <laughs> so why isn't he, in, like, in Vietnam with he's, his, he's, his friends? He still had a lot of sand in, in crevices, mostly in his bum hole from the previous set, and he got off on medical grounds because of that. So. That's in the deleted scenes on the uh, DVD that I watched of the film. Did you so buy that in town? I bought that from Did a that... guy in the pub last week, and he assures me that the extras are legitimate. Okay. The jury's still out on that one now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I know I know what you mean, man. It's um, it's a bit odd why him and his pals aren't in the war. Why some of them are, and some of them are. But we've all got yeah. our, you know non-war friends and our, our war friends and we don't really like to mix them up a lot of time i know i don't personally um so. but yeah it seems to be a bit of a, a plot hole in a film that's kind of filled with kind of illogical situations i suppose yeah um, and that that is the, the craziest fact again it is based on a true story it's based on a uh, the, the novel that a uh, chick donahue wrote the real man Yes, Rose. and which I we get to see in the end credits. I know, which is nice. That I, I, I am quite fond when they do that, wasn't it? It's a true story, and they give you the side by side comparison of like the famous photograph of him and a group of soldiers drinking beer, and then a picture of the boys today, and I was like, ah, oh, that that's nice. That's like, heartwarming. A nice note to kind of end it on. Um. And obviously he went, made this book, Peter Farley, obviously liked the idea of it, and Apple agreed to finance it. And there you go, we have this movie. But the, the Amazon advert, like I just looked up because I'll check this out on Audible. It's It must not be a big book because the audio book is roughly five hours. Which, I mean, maybe he just like speaks really quickly. So, um, but yeah. If you look it up on Amazon, it is uh, listed as the greatest beer run ever, dash, capital letters, the crazy true story behind the major movie starring <laughs> Zac Efron and Russell Crowe. <laughs> That's the actual title they added on the whole, yeah. you know, great beer run thing uh, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's an interesting story, I think. Yeah, I feel... Uh, well, no, I know uh, it's an interesting story. I just think the execution is probably... A little off to be honest yeah. I, and again i i watched it last night not knowing anything about it mm. like other than like that that one line from imdb saying right okay he, he he goes uh to war with beer yeah for his buddies never watched the trailer i just kind of said right that's fine i'll watch it but tonally i just couldn't like there's times right, right, this is silly, it's played for laughs. Like he, he's went to war with a bag full of beer and he's running dodging bullets yeah. with like a rucksack full of beer. And it's just the film couldn't was it right? There's serious moments. But his character is kind of the party boy, the life of the party. Like Chicky's here with the beers. We're all having a laugh getting ourselves in, out, out of sticky situations mm. and then cunts again chucked out of helicopters and you're like 
Yeah, it's it's a bit weird, like tonally, it's, it, it's all over the place. Yeah, like there's even a character in the film that flip flops, and I feel like this film flip flops. <laughs> there's quite a few flip flops actually, mate. Yeah, um, yeah, I completely agree, and I feel like Efron doesn't really. He's not very believable in the role, yeah. and I kind of feel like I never understood why he was going to great lengths to achieve what he wanted to achieve and, and make yeah. this journey, even though it was kind of fun on the way. I never really understood why. Um, I think they attempt to give him a little bit of characterization at the beginning of the film, but it didn't quite work for me. Um, mm. I think Efron's acting is just a bit all over the place. I think it's yeah, a, yeah. a bit a bit wooden and a bit like he's almost waiting for his next line in the initial scenes. I think it gets better as they go to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I think he's given a bit more to do. He's given a bit more energy to the actual situation, right. which in turn makes his performance kind of a bit more exciting. Um, so it does kind of evolve over the film and I think it does get a little bit better, but I think that's pretty much the main problem with the film is that I don't think he's very believable as a character and, and I didn't yeah. really understand why he was doing what what he was doing, and and that for for like it's you know over a, over two hour film. Yes, that's it's 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 you need to kind of be there with the characters at least kind of understand why you know yeah. what's happening is happening, which which I didn't sadly. Oh, and that cheers mm -hmm. anyway, but on 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 the bud <laughs> tonight. Yeah. Yes, I great American I it properly. Me try my first one of Sierra Nevada. Uh, fantastic brew. So. And yeah, it is quite pleasant. Yeah, I, for some reason, I feel like Zac Efron might have not been the right fit. Maybe, hey, you never know, it might have, like, this could have been a passion project for him. But mm. when you're watching it, I, I can't see, like, Chick Donahue. I just see Zac Efron with, with like, a, this cold moustache. And it's just, like, yeah. it, it's, I feel like it needs to be more of an unknown like just somewhere you, you look right. at them and yeah. like, like you just forget his character and you just know him as Zac Efron. Um, Russell Crowe is the same, but he's he's kind of he looked more suited in his role. I think so. Yeah, like Russell Crowe's like not he's beyond his gladiator days. Let's say that. Um, <laughs> but him cutting about as as this journalist, this member of the press, photographer who's capturing what's going on at the war looks completely believable and yeah it brings good start like star power or like like a good name to put on the poster but yeah zach efron's just like just too big just like there, there just kind of yeah. needs to be someone less i don't know it's strange. less glamorous i think and a bit more yeah, yeah. down to earth i think that's the problem with with zach efron as i feel mm -hmm. is i feel that Jeez, this guy's only two years older than me. I've li I've lived a hard life, very hard <laughs> life. Um, yeah, I feel like it. It yeah, need a bit of a better anchor, maybe a more down to earth actor. I feel like I know why he's been casted because obviously you know, people are going to see the film. He's the heartthrob. Yeah. I feel like you know he's he's an alright guy. I, I'm hoping he goes to kind of a Matthew McConaughey type Renaissance period soon, where he. Mm. And this may be the start of it, but I feel like he probably needs to be a bit of a better actor to yeah, kind of and pull that off. Well, and so this could have been him dipping his toe into kind of like a more dramatic role. Because when you look at his, his filmography, it, it's like comedy, raunchy comedies, like well back to the Disney musical days. But yeah. it's, it's like Bad Neighbours, Dirty Grandpa, Baywatch. Like he's there to kind of like be like kind of the hunky brain dead um character that the, that either takes the piss or gets the piss taken out of yeah. uh and maybe he's just trying to transition to those like more serious roles that you see the likes of like andrew garfield doing and so other actors around the same age as him yeah. so maybe he is tired of just kind of doing those raunchy comedies but this one like you could see him that like he has the charm where they're all this um he, he claims to be a, well he's a civilian but everyone thinks ah uh, civilians like this this code for cia so that that seems to be his past to get away with quite a lot 
when he's over there in Vietnam. Yeah, and and he doesn't really play the kind of smooth talking con man. It's it's more he's just the kind of like, I will talk you into letting me do this thing that I need. It's more yeah, but it's more kind of accidental, I think. And there's a lot of misunderstanding. People mm-hmm. often just assume he is somebody else and he goes along with it, rather yeah. than he has to kind of you know put any acting into it. Mm. It's more things just kind of randomly happen. And I think there's a few things towards the back end of the film where it gets a bit too random for me. Things just, you know, he kind of randomly meets one of his friends on a road somewhere in, in oh, Vietnam. Yeah, and it's yeah. just a bit like, uh, I don't know whether this, you know, know. quite works. I feel, I feel you need to, that suspension of disbelief you really need for yeah. the film. Um, and, and I think if you, if you go in with that, you probably there's definitely enjoyment to be found because um, it is quite quite fairly straightforward mm, and quite yeah. easy easy to follow and, and quite I mean breezy in some respect. There's nothing apart yeah. from the back end where it gets a bit dark and a bit kind of exactly like you know you you see the chest of in a little war. bit. There's a lot of like you're in war, son. This is what happens. Like you're in the trench clutching a big bag at uh, Pap's Blue Ribbon. Terrible choice. Awful so, choice. Imagine they go over there and it's like, guys, I brought beer from the bar. I never to open up. It's like, Pops Blue Ribbon. <laughs> what were you thinking? Where's the buds? What's, like, wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I'd definitely be massively disappointed if I was on the front line, you know, shooting off an AK in the rain, in in the yeah. mud and the rain and into the jungle. Got somewhere. For like a Samuel a, Adams. Jeez, <laughs> no, <laughs> that neither. But yeah, if someone bought the old paps, I'd be a little bit disappointed. So, um, but yeah, th- there is kind of there is some good scenes, but it's, it's about two hours and ten minutes, which seems far too much. This could have been like covered in like one hundred minutes. Mm. Um, but I, I'm really intrigued to uh, pick up the audio book now. I feel yeah. like the story's really yeah. interesting. Like, it's a really cool story. I just feel like, like I was saying earlier, I think it, it it's just the execution of it. It doesn't quite work. Yeah. And, I mean, let, let's focus on our director, the man who's steering the ship. And, obviously, um, Peter Farley is one half of, like, a, a duo of directors, isn't it? Like him, it's usually yeah. him and his brother. Farley brothers, yeah. Um who is the other one? Uh, Bobby. Peter Farley and Bobby Farley. I want to say Chris Farley, but it's no. Um, <laughs> and it's like he's had this transition, sort, sort of like what we're expecting of Zac Efron. Like, say his first, like, 15 movies are just, like, full on comedy. Like, Dumb and mm. Dumber, Kingpin, There's Something About Mary... Me, myself, and Irene, Shallow Howl. Like, there's all of those. And then, like, in the last two or three years, it's kind of transitioned to more dramatic work. Yeah, definitely. Like, 2018 was uh, Green Book. I haven't seen that. Like, to be honest, that film gets, like, takes a lot of shit. A lot of the... Oh, I can't remember. Like, obviously, it won Oscars. And a lot of there's a lot of backlash saying that um, it's not mansplaining. It, it's something like the, it's, the it's, white it's, knight it's, thing. Yeah, where, it's like a reverse in driving, reverse driving Miss Daisy from from what I've read. Yeah, like there you've got Viggo Mortensen, who's kind of this, this a, Italian guy who's needing to do favor, earn some money, and then you've got um, Shala Ali, who is like a famous musician. Who needs to do a tour, uh, uh, but he needs a driver, and it's again based on a true story. And when they're driving there, they realise that Viggo Mortensen gets away with a lot more than uh, Mashallah Ali does, where he's a musician, but he's also I think a closet homosexual. So, but they're also travelling through the south. Should get out more. So. The, it's bad enough for for being a black man in the south going to certain places, uh, but he's a really talented musician. So there's kind of like the learning thing of 
sort of like the pair together, sort of like your rush hour thing where they don't really like each other at first. Yeah. But they learn more about each other, they stand up for each other, they teach each other, then they're thick as thieves when when the the time like when it matters most. Like the odd couple kind of yeah. set up. And to be honest, I fucking love that film. It was mm. just really I, like, I felt the connection between those two. It, it worked really well. And when there's moments where you're dreading for one character, the other one bursts in and saves them. And you're just like, ah, this is a fucking brilliant pair. And yeah, it was a shame that it kind of got like, oh, white man saves the day kind of backlash. Mm. And yeah, so it's kind of the film's looked at ne- negatively in hindsight now. But I've seen it a couple of times and each time I would just really dug the chemistry between the two actors and going into this one i was kind of semi hoping that there'd be some sort of like i assumed it was going to be another duel of zach efron and russell crowe yeah but russell's in it for about 10 minutes and it's always at most always it's at the finale isn't it it's it's yeah. all at the back rather than you know, a supporting character throughout the film. Uh, yeah, I, I get, I get what you mean, man. It's a bit disappointing to be honest, because I feel like if maybe if it was in a pair or the the leading actors were in a pair, there might be something more. You know, mm-hmm. maybe Russell Crowe could take okay. a bit of the acting weight a little bit off yeah. Efron, but it, because it's all on Efron's shoulders, the whole story is, and people just pop up here and there. It's, yeah, you know, I think that's what makes it a bit. I don't know. A, a, a bit uh, kind of unengaging sometimes, but I, I do feel like a lot of the cast, apart from those ones that we mentioned, aren't particularly great. I don't know whether it's the writing or whether it just needed like it just needed kind of a second draft or like a bit of a polish. But mm-hmm. it doesn't. I, I don't know. It doesn't quite. There's not a lot of realism to it. I just don't think it's very believable. And, and mm-hmm. some of the dialogue itself, I just felt like it definitely needed like a another run through to be honest yeah yeah i almost feel like the the almost i feel like just because it is a movie that's been um maybe it's just i'm not sure if it's just been distributed by apple or if they financed it from the beginning but just the fact that it's going to like a limited market on a streaming platform which is not really your top tier yeah like it's kind of outside of let's say maybe the top three streaming platforms um so it's not like uh, not like an a-class streaming platform and almost maybe feel like the say the director or the writers or just like the production they kind of coasted i feel i definitely feel like that i definitely feel like with the the direction as well i mean i haven't seen uh the green book i haven't seen the way kind of peter uh frelly takes to more serious fare yeah. So I have nothing to compare it to, but mm-hmm. with this, it definitely feels like very kind of almost TV movie kind of bog mm-hmm. standard, almost like just yeah. sit- sitcom kind of setups to the direction. And it, it's all a bit, I think it just adds to the kind of overall fatigue uh, uh, of, of, of the movie, to be honest. Yeah, um, and that's, I feel like since Peter had such success with Green Book, I feel like he's just kind of just thrown another one out there without putting mm-hmm. as much effort. Like, this isn't going to get any Oscar attention. Right. I, I don't think so. At most, it will get nominations for like a BAFTA, adapted. Something shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was meaning sort of like a, like an adapted screenplay, like something like this film was based yeah. on a book. So uh, it those might, ones. Yeah, it might get like a nod at least, but maybe not kind of the, the major okay, prizes. Right. Largo Logs, we've said it here at... Uh, 9.31 on the 7th of October 2022. Jeez, I should be in bed. The greatest Jeez, beer the run hell? ever. I should, all night, dude. I should be in bed. Don't, don't step over my bed. The greatest beer run ever wins a BAFTA. Are you still, you're still talking? So. I just went for a power nap. Yeah. I just I'm said, just like, we were thrown out there into the universe that uh, the greatest beer run ever will win a BAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yep. The, the greatest beer one ever will Just, win a BAFTA. Yep. We've missed it, Megged. Uh, that shit right there. Yeah, um, I feel like uh, maybe what you were hinting at, but the budget might be a bit low because it was 
you know, made for Apple TV or possibly made and then I yeah, don't, and don't know, also like, distributed right, by Apple TV. The like, okay, Apple, thank you for for financing our movie. What we're going to do? We're going to set it. Uh, <clears throat> when was it set in the? The 60s, where none of your technology exists. So there'll be no product no placement product for you, Apple. Yeah. No iWatches. I just thought, maybe that's why they pulled back on like, the, oh, uh, the budget. <laughs> so. but but, maybe, maybe, because it wasn't, I mean, apart from Pabst and Budweiser, I, I yeah. didn't see any other I mean, product placement, if, really. If it was, like, nowadays, it'd be checky just going... Uh, Siri going to uh, send uh, some Pops Blue ribbon, uh, ribbon to to uh, Vietnam, please. So can I get yeah, the... Amazon. Yep, uh, first get... class. <laughs> uh, can I get for... GPS uh, tracking um, route to to Viet the Viet Cong hideout, please? Thank thank you, thank yep. you, Siri. And and that's it. You good to mm -hmm. go? Got nothing to worry about. Uh, I'm well, just going to text my home address to uh, Oklahoma. One yep. second. Oh shit. And, that was Oklahoma, that was like dude. kind of one of those little genuine bits that seemed nice where it was like your Vietnamese uh, traffic cop and it was just really helpful stop chicky for getting run down yeah and then they just had this light conversation and then it happened again and then they exchanged contact information it's like hey anytime you come come over to was it Brooklyn or wherever they was from mm. it's like you could stay at my place and the, the guy who he nicknamed Oklahoma was so pleased. And of course, that happens. You know, yeah. like, oh, yeah. let's get emotionally invested invested in our character. wonder what yeah. will happen well, to that guy. There needed to be at least one in the film so, that we did for that, for that brief moment. Care for. Yeah, and, and yeah. I, I feel like it, it, I might be ma being massively kind of pessimistic, but even that I felt was a bit forced. I feel like we need this little moment there. Get a bit of investment, maybe yeah. try and, and add some weight or some gravitas to the I, finale. I would you didn't really. I would forgive all of those moments if that's in the book. Yeah. Like if if the real Chick Donahue had these interactions with this guy yeah. and they pass on personal information only to find out during the conflict of war yeah. something <laughs> tragic happens. <laughs> you let me know and I'll retract, officially retract so, my comment. I, on, so yeah, there, there's these things like, man, it's stereotypical Hollywood tropes, <laughs> but I do, I feel like I need to read the book and find out for myself. And yeah, I, th I think that'd be, yeah, I, th I think that'd be awesome. Because I think, as I said, the story's great. I'm being a, hate, I'm being a hater right now. It's, I don't mean to be, I, th isn't I think brilliant. it's an okay film. I, I, I genuinely don't think yeah. it's, it's trash or anything. I it think was it's just worth a little, one watch. Like, watch it was worth it. one watch. Like, watch definitely. It. Definitely. Two hours of your time. Two hours of your time. Just to see if, if our review see. is as bad if as the film. Is as bad as the film. That's what You took the words right out of my mouth. How did you so. do that? Yeah, it's not a bad film. There's, a, no, there's a bad delay between us. There's a bad <laughs> delay between... I got that. Um... <laughs> It's an okay film. Yeah, you know it, it. It it's it's breezy. It's a fun little story. Whether it should be two hours long, I don't know. But I think it just needed another polish, to be honest. Um, but I think mm -hmm. maybe the budget or, or the lack of budget possibly got in the way uh, of, of of a a good film rather than you know an okay one, which is what we got. Yeah. Cheers! Cheers to that. And cheers to you for watching this video. Appreciate that. You Adios. Didn't have to, but you did. And I love you.